I've heard many people describe Games Workshop as being in a bad relationship. Lying, cheating, manipulating, and I don't think those feelings are wrong. Although I do tend to think anthropomorphizing a corporate entity like that lets them off the hook for all the nasty things they do. Turning them into a person changes corporate greed into selfishness, conflict of interest into manipulation, and a slavish devotion to their shareholders' greed. And Games Workshop can't change these problems the same way a banned friend can. But I digress. But I don't want to talk about that today, because most people don't care. And we're here to buy toys, damn it! And I have some big ideas of what Games Workshop could sell to us to make us happy again. So why do people leave Games Workshop? The price. But also other games. Does Games Workshop really make the best games anymore? I think it's a pretty darn close call. A lot of companies are doing very similar stuff. We're already probably living in the golden age of Games Workshop. New models all the time, old models are getting a refresh, Black Library is crushing it. But why doesn't it feel golden? Why isn't Games Workshop crushing it like they used to? Well, I tend to think it's because it kind of feels like we're at the end. Everything looks great. Everything will continue to look great. Every new model coming out looks great. It all looks great. Great isn't great anymore. It's the standard. I'm here at Adepticon 2022, and I'm surrounded by tons of awesome, cool games, and everything is great. So if everything is great, why stick with Games Workshop? Well, the easy answer is maybe don't. You could play Malifaux, third edition. You could play Infinity by Corvus Belly. You could play War Machine and Hordes. You could play Fallout Wasteland Warfare. Or one of my favorites, Star Wars X-Wing. But I like Warhammer and I want it to succeed. So how do we do that? Well, Games Workshop got here by making the best plastic models, having the most games, and being on the cutting edge. Keyword, they were on the cutting edge. Do you think that Games Workshop makes the best miniatures? I, I think they make great miniatures. I don't know if it's the best, because there's a lot out there, especially with like 3D printing. You can do a lot. Um, I guess the best plastic models in that scale. Sure. Yeah, I'm very spoiled on those. Uh, I think that ever since I picked up doing modeling, they're definitely my favorite. A hundred percent. Yes, I do. Do you think that Games Workshop makes the best models? Absolutely. hundred percent. I don't think without them, we would have the industry we have today. Yeah, I would have to say probably. Um, they're not the best priced, but yeah, I would definitely say they probably look the best though. Do you think Games Workshop makes the best models? They make good models. Is Games Workshop really still on the cutting edge? Their models are probably about as good as it gets for plastics, but is there really no more room for advancement? I don't think so. In fact, I have a couple of big ideas that I think could put Games Workshop right back on top. What if Games Workshop used metal for key components? Think about it, metal can be bent by hand, so if things like tentacles, tail, hair, tassels, streamers were made of metal, you could bend them however you wanted. To the left, to the right, figure eight, crazy straw, pretzel style, you could do anything. The problem with metal is it's not really a scalable process, and that's why Games Workshop doesn't do it. But it's not beyond the possibility to invent some sort of a pewter injection system. I can think of it, which must mean it's possible. And it'd be really cool if Games Workshop is the only company with that tech. And it doesn't necessarily have to be metal. There's some pretty cool thermoplastics out there, and I'm sure they could come up with something. Do you like metal models? I actually don't mind metal models, uh, especially on the tabletop. They add a lot of weight to a miniature, which makes them feel imposing. You know, I don't like seek them out, but I definitely don't mind them as much as I see people in my comment section kind of minding them. Like, they kind of treat them as like, you know, like voodoo, like they're taboo. Like, I don't want to be involved in that, but I don't mind metal models. Like, my, my Guild Ball minis are metal, my Infinity ones are metal, and I don't really mind. I, I don't have any problems. No. <laughs> I play Skaven, so a lot of their models are metal, and just dealing with getting the basically make sure they don't chip as they're being transported after being painted is one of the hardest parts that I don't like. Resin models have the same problem. Big brain idea number two, bring back the banners. Bring back the banners. I'm talking about big, dumb flags, not Bruce Banner. Back in Rogue Trader, you could hardly see the minis through the forest of flags, but nowadays you don't see them that much, and I think that is a step in the wrong direction. The big problem with the banner is they are hard to paint. Freehanding them is next to impossible, and at the very least, very, very difficult. But why paint them when you can print them out? Maybe Games Workshop could give us some sort of an app. 
probably hosted it on their own website so they could bombard us with their own advertising. While us gamers spend hours and hours and hours carefully crafting our perfect banner out of unique Games Workshop assets. Then we could print it out, probably onto cardstock or some sort of a paper that has some flexibility so that we could pose it for just the right amount of flappiness. Do you like banners on minis? Uh, not really. I'm not really into it too much, but that's because I'm uh, just a terrible painter. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Uh, what I, do, I don't like it when like GW like sculpts a bunch of shit on it. I like it when it's flat and open, and you can like actually maybe do some freehanding on there. Mm, that's a good one. Like pre-sculpted or old school? Whatever. I like the old school ones, the paper ones. That's the way to go. Yeah. yeah you print it out. You got all the nice fancy designs. Mm -hmm. That's the way to do it. My next big innovative idea for Games Workshop is stickers. Hear me out, I love decals, but most people don't, and a lot of people throw them away, which is probably why Games Workshop has been making less and less of them over the years. I'm looking at you, Space Marines that only come with Ultramarines transfers. Ugh, that one still hurts. The problem with decals is that they are old school. Your dad's dad probably put decals on his model airplanes. What I am proposing is print a printed sticker on a comparatively thin sheet of plastic. That way it'll be super easy to put onto your models and you can get rid of that harsh plastic edge with just a few coats of gloss paint. That would definitely tempt me. After my model's done and looking spiffy, I can break out my sticker book and start to decorate my models with some peel and stick goodness. Have you ever put decals on your models? I have not. I've never done a decal in my life. Oh, I'm a freehand person. I went to art school. <laughs> so, no, actually, I tried once, and it, it was horrible and wrinkly, and I didn't know how to do it, so I stopped. <laughs> have you ever put a decal on your models? Yeah, I have. Maybe, like, once or twice. Yeah, I will uh, put decals on every mini, pretty much. I just like it. It adds a lot of detail that I'm not good at putting in freehand, so, like, unit markers and, like, uh, you know, like hazards and anything that adds just a tiny more detail to the model to give me my story on my stuff I'm looking for, so. Have you ever put a decal on your miniatures? Like once? Back in the day? Have you ever put a decal on your models? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. My next big idea for how to fix Games Workshop models is to make them more poseable. This would require tons more engineering on their part and probably make models take twice as long to produce, but it would be worth it if gamers were buying models purely for the fun of building them. Some of the older kits do this okay, the tower good, most everything else is bad. But just try to imagine some more cool poses with some peg in slot, maybe even some ball joints. That would be pretty dope, action figure style, baby. Things that give hobbyists total control over their models. Games Workshop has come up with a way to make models with incredibly tight tolerances, but it's never really been done in a 28mm style. But what if Games Workshop was the one company to figure it out? I like building models, but I can't say I love it. It's not nearly as much fun as building a Gundam. It'd be a whole new level of engineering, but if Games Workshop pulls it off, then I could have my orc in the perfect T pose to assert dominance. If it's wrong to make my Eldar warriors dab, I don't want to be right. Do you wish the models had more posability? Yes. Yes, I have noticed with a lot of the miniatures that I've assembled that limited posability really limits what you're able to do with them. Oh yeah, no, I uh, I came back from way long ago, so like back in the day, you can make your marines do like whatever if you pose them actually shooting, if you pose them at ease and stuff. And nowadays it's all mono pose. And while some of them are really cool, it'd be nice to have like one squad of all mono pose that look good. Uh, when you have two or three of the exact same squad and they all look kind of similar like that, I don't know, it kind of takes away from it for me. It takes away from the uniqueness of at least the mono poses. I actually really do like the mono pose that we get from GW now because they're way more dynamic than we've ever had before. And let's be real, a Space Marine doing this or this isn't really that big of a deal versus those new dynamic poses yeah. they have, so I don't really care. Like, I like the new stuff. Yes, there are definitely models I wish were more posable. Great idea, number I've lost count. Make the models magnet ready. I can't believe this isn't already a thing. Games Workshop has been making models for decades with way too many war gear options, leaving it up to us poor gamers to come up with creative solutions of how to get just a few options out of each box. WYSIWYG is nice, but most people don't care, don't want to track down pins and drills online, and don't want to mangle their beautiful minis. But Games Workshop could just make the models come like that. A little hole in the arms and torso would be all it takes. I would buy Games Workshop magnets if they were convenient. You could even make them in some obnoxious proprietary size, like 2.23 millimeters. And sure, Games Workshop might argue that they'll miss out on repeat sales from people buying multiple boxes to get extra war gear options. But does anybody actually do that? I think people really would buy magnet packs and war gear packs. And Games Workshop, you already sell a hobby drill. What do you think people are doing with that hobby drill? They're drilling holes in your models to insert other people's magnets. 
Have you ever thought about magnetizing your minis? All the time. Uh, yes, I magnetized an Imperial Knight to have it swap out weapon options. I've planned on doing a few, but haven't gotten around to it yet. A few others. I try to avoid it, but yes. Have you ever magnetized your minis before? I have. Yeah, uh, I'm uh, magnetizing my uh, Titanicus stuff. Like in their mouths? Or like... Have you ever put magnets in your miniatures? Uh, I used to back in the day put a lot of magnets. Uh, I've gotten to the thing where I'm just old enough, I'm just going to buy a second model if I want to change the loadout. Those are my ideas of how to make Games Workshop models more interesting. But here's another idea for free. How about some actually good swag? I'm not talking about plush toys and candles, I'm talking about actually cool props from the universe of 40k. How about a replica of an Imperial Throne Jelts, the official currency of the Imperium of Man? Or a full-size bolt pistol? People are ready to drop big money on Forge Royal Thunderhawk gunships. You're telling me they wouldn't drop money on a plasma pistol? People would go nuts for the severed talent of a gene stealer or a full-sized Eldari helmet. There's clearly already a market for Games Workshop junk. Imagine how well an actual good product would do. I would pre-order a chainsword. And it wouldn't just be cosplay nerds. Everybody wants a servo skull watching over them while they paint. Would you buy 40k props from Games Workshop? Every day. Every day. If it's Deathcore, I will buy it. If Games Workshop made 40k props, like for costumes, would you buy them? No. Actually, probably, yeah. Honestly, I would probably get a bolter and a chainsword. Especially if the chainsword was actually kind of like working and it had like the little the, the, the things going, I would 100% I would buy that, yeah. Unfortunately, I, I cannot say no to that. That sounds great, yeah. I would, I would buy some because it'd be cool set dressing for like a video set. But like if I was a normal consumer, definitely not. Maybe if there was cool Sisters of Battle stuff. I could I could cosplay Sisters of Battle. That would be fun. That would be fun. Absolutely. Would it get props? It'd probably be a bit too expensive, but yeah, I'd, I'd probably buy one or two. See, this is how Games Workshop Trap recaptures the magic in this relationship. Prove to us that you can still surprise us. Because yes, everything is fine, but fine is boring. The new striping scorpions are going to be great. The new plastic corn berserkers are going to look great. But who cares? Refreshes aren't refreshing, they're expected. But what if Games Workshop hit us with a curveball? Something that really made us thought, wow, I didn't see that coming, I was not expecting that, and I wonder what they're gonna come out with next. I just threw a lot at you, and is any of it reasonable or achievable? I don't know, but that's how innovation and invention always is. Right now, everything is good, but that's just not cutting the biscuits anymore. Slicing the bread, churning the butter, pouring the gravy, jingling my bells. Now, I am never the one spotting the 3D printer doomsday scenarios, but 3D printers can do a lot of the things plastic can do. It's getting pretty darn perfect. And I think Games Workshop has to improvise, adapt, and overcome. Oh, you 3D printed your warlord? That's cute. Does he have superposable arms, magnetized weapon options, hand-posed tentacles, a super-customized banner, and perfect sticker detailing? No? Well, I guess it's still pretty cool. I can barely see the layer lines. That's how I think Games Workshop succeeds. Not by making the arguably best wargaming miniatures, but making the best, most cutting edge toys this side of the Mississippi. If they do that, then I think people will be breaking down the door to give them money. Do you like Games Workshop games? I do and I don't at the moment. Do you like Games Workshop games? Yes. Uh, I do actually. I, I'm kind of a classicist. Mordheim was actually my favorite, and I still love Mordheim even though it's been out of print for forever. But uh, I've, I'm a fantasy fan as well, so I haven't played the new iteration of fantasy, but I do play 40k a little bit. I have an Eldar army. I do. I enjoy them in theory. Yeah, these days I play um, Warcry. That's pretty much the only one right now. Do you enjoy Games Workshop games? I haven't played in a long time, and when I did, I had to rely on my friends to explain the rules, and every time they make me play with them, I have to buy a new codex, and I do not like that because they get more expensive every time. Yes. So basically, Games Workshop, please hire me. I am full of ideas. Offer is on the table, and I work cheap. $200,000 a year, and I am yours. Make me head of research and development ideas. I have no actual applicable skills. I'm pretty good with a sewing machine, and I make a mean egg salad sandwich. Thanks for watching. Balls in your court, Games Workshop. The only question is, do you have the balls?